happy February and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to tell you all about the Valentine Boyfriend Book Tag. So if you want to know what that entails, then just keep watching. Can you see it? February, Valentine's Day. Last year I talked about crushes versus squishes. Go check that out if you haven't checked it out already. This year I'm doing my very own original book tag. Whenever it gets to February, I start thinking about Valentine's Day. But now, every time I think of Valentine's Day, I think of Valentine Morgenstern. So I created a book tag so that I would have a reason to talk about shadow hunters around Valentine's Day. And it probably does not help that I literally just finished Queen of Iron Darkness. So all I wanna do is talk about shadow hunters. So I created this book tag as a excuse to just talk about some of my favorite characters. The Valentine Boyfriend book tag is kind of the same as the fictional boyfriend book tag where you have 10 fictional boyfriends and you choose a fictional character to go into each of the categories but in mine the valentine boyfriend book tag you have to choose a character from the shadow hunter books and one of those characters has to be valentine that's why it's called the valentine boyfriend book tag not all of mine are the same as the fictional Boy from book tag. I came up with a few of my own and a couple other people helped me out because making decisions is hard for me. Let's just get started with this and I will explain it on the way. First boyfriend, your first crush. The first boy that makes you go, oh, I just love them so much. This one was a little difficult for me, okay, because There were so many boys I could have put into this category in the Shadow Hunter world. And for full disclosure, you have to go see my Squishes versus Crushes because technically I never had a crush on any of these characters. I've only ever had Squishes. Now, if I were a character in these books, I would definitely have crushes on these guys if they were real and they, in, and they were in my life. I would definitely have crushes on these guys, so it was really, really difficult for me to choose because reasons. But because of the roundabout way that I read these books, I read them in chronological order, but that wasn't the first time these characters had come into my life. So I went off of that and the first boy that made me go, oh, was Simon Lewis. I love Simon, okay? I'm sorry. I just love him so much. Simon is my type of guy, okay? He is definitely the type of guy that if I met him in real life, I would crush so hard on him. He is just too cute, too sweet, and too nerdy for me to not have a crush on. <laughs> He's just, he's hes my type, he's my type of guy. Number two, the sweetest boyfriend. See, this is what was difficult, was because I couldn't decide which boy I wanted to put into these top two categories. It was a toss up between these two characters. The sweetest boyfriend out of any of these boys is without a doubt, hands down, Jim Carstairs. I love Jem so, so much. I think Jem is the sweetest character I've ever met in any, any book ever. He is just too cute and too sweet and too loving and too caring and too kind. He is so romantic and he is just perfect. He's an absolute precious Jem. I've heard that there are some people in this world that just don't like Jem. I don't get that. I don't get how people can't like Jem. He is just, he's just the sweetest. He's the sweetest boy in all the world. Three, the boy you bring home to mom. That's pretty self-explanatory. It's the boy that you know your family would just love. I feel like this is kind of obvious, but it, okay. It wasn't obvious when I first came up with this. I thought I knew where I was going with this one. I thought I had a guy in mind. But then that guy fit a different category way better. So I put him there. And then I had to sit and think, 
Who would my mom love? And my mom loves Magnus Bane. She doesn't know all of the characters and Magnus Bane is a different category for me. And so I had to think really hard about this. And then it just like clicked. It clicked instantly. And I was just like, duh, perfect Diego. I mean, what mom wouldn't love perfect Diego? He's perfect. Mothers adore him, apparently. Um, I, I like perfect Diego. Um, not really romantic one. But he's a good, he's a good guy. He's got multiple talents. He's very smart. He's very generous and kind and well-mannered. Just the kind of boy you would want to bring home to your mom. She would, she would worry about you less if Perfect Diego was by your side all the time. Or so I feel. Number four. The boy you love with your whole heart and want to be in your life for all the days, but in a friendly way. The boy you friend zone. This was not hard for me, okay? It was originally, but then when I really thought about it from my perspective, I was like, oh. Instantly, I instantly knew who the perfect boy to friend zone is. The boy I love with all of my heart and want in my life for all the days of my life, but in a platonic, friendly way, in no way romantic whatsoever, Jace. I love Jace, I do, but he's very annoying. It gets on my nerves a lot. This was not a difficult decision for me once I really thought about it because I have a real life Jace in my life. I love my Jace. My Jace is my best friend. So it was not that hard for me that Jace is the boy that I would friend zone. I never had any romantical feelings about Jace ever. Like ever, like I understood why some would. And yeah, he's attractive and he's like great at what he does, but like, he's just, he's not my type. But I would love to have him as a friend. Five, the broody bad boy boyfriend. This, this one was pretty obvious for me. I mean like, there's only so few characters from these books that would fit perfectly into this category for me. And this was not a difficult decision. Will Herondale. I, f I feel like he wrote the textbook on broody bad boy boyfriends. The, the boy that has a dark secret or a dark past. He's broody and woe is me and he does things that you probably shouldn't do, but he's a good boyfriend. Sometimes. I love Will Herondale, like I do, okay? He's fan freaking tastic he is a, one of my favorite characters of all time. Like, I could go on and on and on and on, and I have, and I will if you send me in that direction. I have gone on about him for hours. <laughs> I love Will Herondale so much. He is just textbook broody though. And that doesn't bother me, it adds character to him. It, it, it does annoy me a little. Like, sometimes I'm just like, dude, really? Really? Yes. I think, I think Will is very broody. But I love him anyway. Six. The Fixer Upper. The boy you know you could just make his life so much better if he would just allow you to help him. This one was difficult for me, not gonna lie. Originally, I thought Sebastian would be like a great person for this and I still do think that he would be a good person for this category but I wanted to have more balance I'm being 100% honest here I wanted to have balance in my boys I didn't want to have too many people from the mortal instruments or too many people from the infernal devices and I could have or too many people from the dark artifices or any of these books and so I nixed Sebastian and I thought about it 
a little bit longer and I came up with, I think, a really good guy for this category. Gabriel Lightwood. Have you guys met Gabriel Lightwood? He annoyed the crap out of me when I first met him and I wanted to, to slap him several times, but I could just like, you know when you meet a boy and you're just like, you have so much potential. Like you, you just, you just know that with some good guidance in their life, they're just gonna be great. I feel like that with Gabriel. I'm not really gonna talk all that much about his character arc, just in case you haven't seen it, but um, Gabriel Lightwood is a good fixer rapper. Long distance boyfriend. The boyfriend you would have and would be okay being parted from, being a long distance away from. For this, I chose Valentine Morgenstern. I'd be okay if he was a long distance away from me. A, a long, a long distance, a long distance away from me. Very long distance away from me. I feel like that would be a good place for Valentine to be in my life. It's, a, it's far away, far away from me. So that's where I put Valentine. Eight. The always there boyfriend. The boy you can always count on. You know, no matter what, they will always be there for you. They will always help you. They will always be there to comfort you and guide you, pick you up when you fall down. The boy you know will drop everything and come to your aid. This one was pretty easy for me. Julian Blackthorne. Have you guys met this boy? He is always there for the people that he loves and to be loved by him would be a great privilege. Platonic or otherwise, to have him in your life would be a good blessing. He scares me, I'm not gonna lie, he scares me a little bit, but it's just cause he's literally always there and always willing to do whatever it takes to help his family. That's it. That's not a bad thing, right? I love Julian Blackthorne. He's great. Nine. Your secret boyfriend. That's the boy that you are in love with and could possibly be in a relationship with, but nobody knows. It's your secret boyfriend. Maybe they don't know him. Maybe they don't know that you like him. Maybe they don't know that you're dating him. It's a secret. This one was the hardest one for me. So hard because I'm very vocal about my love for all of these boys. And then it came to me in a moment of clarity. George Lovelace. I love George so much, okay? I love George. He is so sweet, so supportive, and I mean like handsome, handsome. And he's my secret boyfriend because I love him, but like nobody knows him. So my relationship with George is a secret. Number 10 your soulmate. I feel like this is pretty self-explanatory. Not a hard decision at all. I, boom, first one off the checklist. My soulmate is Magnus Bang. I love Magnus so much, it hurts sometimes. If I were a character in these books, just as myself, I'd love Magnus Bane. If I were the character I am in these books, I'd love Magnus Bane so much it hurts sometimes. He just brings me so much joy. His happiness brings me great joy. His sorrow hurts my soul so bad. There is nothing I wouldn't do for Magnus Bane. He's precious to me. He will always be precious to me. He will always be my favorite. I love Magnus Bane. I love him so much. I love everything that he is. I love everything that he does. I love everything that he loves. The person he is, the person he was, the person he's going to be, what he wants to do with his life. Like just, Magnus Bain is amazing. There you have it. Those are my 10 boyfriend types. If you want the list, I will leave it down in the description below. You have 10 boys, you pick them from the Shadowhunter novels and you have to put Valentine in one of them, you have to, that's a rule. 
And then you tag three people. Why? Because 10 is my favorite number and three is my second favorite number. So I'm going to tag three booktubers that I'm pretty sure will probably never even hear that I tagged them. I tag Hannah from Clockwork Reader, Emma from Emma Books, and Naya from Naya Reads and Smiles. Those are the people that I tag. I hope that they do it. I'm proud of this tag. I, I spent a lot of time thinking about it, a lot of time worrying about it, a lot of time stressing over which boy was gonna go where and if it was a good idea because I have more ideas about this tag that I'll show you later in the year. I feel good about it. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, could you give it a thumbs up? Comment down below some of your favorite boyfriends from the Shadowhunters where you would put Valentine. And if you also want to experience more of my love for more of my fandoms and more of my squishes on boys in my other fandoms, then you could easily just go onto my Twitter or my Instagram because I gush over there all the time. And you will always know what I am reading or watching over there. And it'll just be fun to have you as my online friend. Also, stick around for next week. Subscribe if you haven't. Click the notification bell if you would like to be notified when next week's video pops up next Saturday. It is the first casual cosplay of the year. I know, right? That's been a while since I've done a casual cosplay. If you guys have any suggestions for who you would like to see me casually cosplay this year, leave them down below or message me on Twitter or Instagram. I hope you guys are having a fabulous week and a fabulous life and I will see you guys next week. Bye. William. Stay put, William. Worst is over. The monsters in my head are scared of love. Falling people.